Hi, I'm Barrett, and welcome to my video covering the timeline format and video monitoring project settings of DaVinci Resolve 15. These settings are critical in order to ensure that you're seeing an accurate image on your external display. The project settings may be accessed by clicking the gear icon here. To apply the changes you've made while keeping the window open, Alt-click or Option-click Save. Timeline Resolution It's best to set the timeline to the highest resolution you'll deliver. While Resolve's resolution independence means you can bring in 4K footage to a 1080 timeline and then render back out to 4K, working in the highest resolution timeline does entail certain advantages. For example, keying quality is better, as may be tracking. Also, when editing, if what you see best reflects the final output, then you can make better editing decisions. If your workstation has trouble keeping up with a 4K timeline, consider making optimized media, as well as enabling smart cache. This area allows you to specify resolutions that aren't in the drop-down menu. Some content for Facebook and Instagram is displayed in a 1 to 1, 4 to 5, 2 to 3, or 9 to 16 aspect ratio, which you could set here. Pixel aspect ratio. This will typically be square. If you're creating standard def deliverables, however, selecting an SD resolution unlocks the 4, 3, and 16, 9 aspect ratios. There's also an option if your project was shot in the anamorphic lensing of CinemaScope. Timeline Frame Rate It is critical to correctly set your frame rate before you import any media as it cannot be changed after that point. Playback Frame Rate The playback frame rate can be modified to reflect the requirements of your monitor. You can also lower the frame rate here to monitor your footage in slow motion. Enable Video Field Processing The only time you'll need to turn this on is if 1 you're mastering your project to an interlaced format, and two, your project includes effects that require field processing, such as blurring or sharpening, or sizing adjustments, pans, tilt, zooms, rotations, and such. If you're simply bringing interlaced clips into a progressive frame project, you don't need to enable this. You just need to make sure to select the Enable Deinterlacing checkbox in Clip Attributes here, but keep Enable Field Processing off. Otherwise, you'll end up disabling the deinterlacing on all your clips. Now on to the video monitoring settings. These settings pertain to the output path and standard of signal sent by your workstation's video output interface. Video Format the default video format setting is the same resolution and frame rate as we set in the timeline settings above, but you can change this to match the resolution and refresh rate of your grading monitor. Use 444 SDI. The DaVinci Resolve manual describes this option as a signal path for monitoring image data to monitors that support 444 chroma sampling via dual SDI connections. This refers to the SMPTE 372M standard called Dual Link HD SDI, which uses two HD SDI cables to provide the bandwidth to support 1080 10 bit 444 color at 30 frames a second. So, if the video output device on your workstation is of this particular Dual Link standard, then you'll want to check this box. There are two 3G standards, A and B. Level B is further broken down into the Dual Link DL and Dual Stream DS formats. Depending on their mapping, both Level A and Level B DL support either 1080 10-bit 10 444 at 30 progressive frames a second or 422 at 60 frames a second. Level B DS only does 1080 422 and only at 30p. The correct setting, however, simply depends on the requirements of your monitor. So if your monitor only works on the A standard, then you'll need to enable this option. Use dual outputs on SDI will come into play if you're using Dolby Vision to master HDR content. If your DeckLink card has dual SDI outputs, then you can enable this option to view the HDR and tone mapped version simultaneously. One SDI output is the HDR signal, and the other SDI is the tone mapped signal. SDI Configuration 
Video signals are transmitted in many different ways. SDI can be sent in a single, dual, or quadlink configuration. The configuration you need to select depends on the video standard coming from your DeckLink card and the SDI signal configuration required by your grading monitor. For example, some monitors can only accept DCI 4K 444 via quadlink. Data levels. Image data can be stored by two data levels, video or full. This setting needs to match the data range of your monitor. If your external display is set to the REC 709 video standard, choose the video option. Usually for broadcast, we use 709. But if you're working with 10-bit RGB 444 data or with DPX image sequences and you wish to monitor the full range on a display that supports full range signals, then select the full option. Video bit depth. This setting should also correspond to the capability of your external monitor and match the bit depth of the data you're working with. If your monitor supports 10-bit or the emerging 12-bit video format, and if you're working with data in either bit depth, then set this accordingly. 8-bit has only 256 shades of gray, that's 2 to the 8th power. 10-bit, however, gives you 1024 shades of gray, 2 to the 10th power which means you won't see banding in subtle gradations such as when viewing a sunset. Monitor scaling. Resolve offers two options for handling the scaling process if you're viewing a large projected image. The bilinear option employs an edge-preserving algorithm to reduce artifacts while scaling. The default setting is set to basic. Use REC 601 matrix for 422 SDI output. This is a legacy compatibility option. If you have a REC 601 display and are using Blackmagic hardware for SDI output, then enable this option. Enable HDR metadata over HDMI. This only comes into play if you're set up to grade HDR footage and have an HDR aware monitor. Some displays automatically switch to HDR mode when it detects HDR metadata and returns it to its previous state once the HDR content finishes. If you enable this functionality, you should also enable the HDR mastering is for X nits option in the color management page and set it to the level that your HDR display is capable of. This concludes my video. Thank you for watching and until next time.